battle is three five minute rounds in the brave combat federation super lightweight division introducing your first warrior fighting out of the blue corner this man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of four wins and two losses he stands at 180 centimeters tall and weighs in at 75.2 kilograms fighting out of russia presenting Yuri Veronici. And his opponent standing across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of nine wins, six losses, and one draw. He stands 179 centimeters tall and weighs in at 74.5 kilograms. Fighting out of Ahmad MMA, Chechnya, Russia. Please welcome Kunkar pa Russia Osmaev! Will this be the fight that breaks the trend? I highly doubt it, Kirik. Sebastian, you are dead right. This is an Ahmad fighter in here. They are finishers to the heart and soul. And to his opponent's credit, I mean, all of their Nitsen's wins have also come via finish. So they obviously prefer to leave a judges out of the equation. And having, having said that, though, I want to say these fighters do not gas. Both these fighters have excellent endurance, as I don't believe we're going to see. Exactly. And, and it, it'll be interesting seeing, you know, so how fighters react on a lo uh, from a long layup. I mean, some fighters, it can kind of soften them up a little bit. But for other fighters, as what it looks like to be the case here for Veronitsen, you know, he seems to be hungry, ready to get back in there. For some nice kicks so far, and you know he looks to, he looks on point. It often hinges on injuries. What they call ring rust can happen after a year or two. But if a fighter has been sustaining numerous injuries over time, taking a year off can sometimes bring them up a level. Absolutely. I mean, so far he seems calm, cool, collected. He's been the one advancing for most of the fight. He made his pro debut in 2015. And as mentioned before, he is a three-time national Russian pancreation champion, as well as a European and world pancreation champion. For those of you in Brave Nation who are not familiar with pancreation, it's a, you could call it MMA light. Oh, look, Osmaya he's on a guillotine. Is on the ground. Oh, that looks tight. That looks really tight. Positioning is not quite there. Maybe a slam coming up. That is tight. This is more of a slow choke because of the positioning of the forearms. And Veronitsyn has to watch. He's got he's to watch his endurance, too. You can wipe out your arms. You can burn out your arms. Looking for a guillotine too hard if it's not quite there. Absolutely. And it was very smartly recognized by Osmaev. I think that's actually why he didn't want to go for the slam, because I think he saw the possibility of the slipping tighter into the choke there. So what he did instead was just let Veronitsyn hang there, let the grip loosen naturally, and push it off by himself. And look at where it got him. It got him to top control here. Top control and about to rain some shots down. Big props to the Veronitsyn. He's keeping the head tight. When you have the opponent who is in top guard, head stuffed, it becomes very hard for that opponent to get anything off. They don't have the leverage to do strikes, and it's very hard for him to pass that guard. Excellent guard work, and now Veronitsyn is looking for likely a submission attempt on the arm, completely denied. Ahmad fighters, extraordinarily hard to tap. Absolutely, I mean, we saw that just now. I mean, the, getting a guillotine like that while they are still so so dry, where there's not really any any sweat to you know to use your advantage to kind of slip out of. I mean, so far I, I'd say Veronitsyn is doing pretty good defensively on the ground here. I w do think though that we will see a little bit more action in round two, as Veronitsyn has gonna, done a good job at sort of stalling the action here at you know preventing Osmaev from getting off a whole lot of offense, which is definitely a good move from him. 
It is. I mean, this sport was built on submissions initially, and back in the day, if you knew submissions, your opponent didn't. You could snap a submission out of nowhere and end a fight early. But now, today, everybody knows everything. You can still get submissions, but ordinarily, you have to beat the person up with punches and kicks first. Absolutely, Kirk. I mean, everyone is just so well-rounded these days. I mean, there's very few techniques that are as specialized these days as it was before. And there's an old saying in jiu-jitsu, punch a black belt, he turns into a brown belt, punch him again, turns into a purple belt. That's one of the problems with having a submission-based game based on your guard. While you're in that guard, you're gonna take some shots to the head inevitably, and it does not ex help your ability to pull off submissions. But Veronese's still at it, trying to pop his hips out, maybe looking for that arm bar again. Maybe very tough to get, though, this close to the fence. And Ismaev is definitely more accustomed to going to the judges, uh, just to sort of clarify a little bit of what was said earlier. I mean, he does have finishes, but he has definitely been to the judges' scorecards substantially more often than Veronitsyn has. Just heard the knock, knock, knock for short time. Round is almost over. Oh, there was a solid strikes there from the top control. And Sebastian, call this one. Who do you think? Round two. Little glove touch. Love to see that. In the middle of trying to knock each other out, they are friends and brothers. Right, you are, Kirik. And let's see how that takedown and the submission attempt changed the story of the fight. Because it seemed like Derenison, you know, was looking comfortable on the feet initially. Went for a takedown, or uh, sorry, went for a guillotine there when the opportunity presented itself. I think he'll be a bit more keen to stay on the feet now. Oh, nice strikes there from Derenitsen. Nice little combination there, capped off with a kick. Nice work. And like I said, I just think, you know, he's, he's going to want to keep the fight a little bit more on the feet now. Seems like Osmayev recognized that because he went for the takedown. He's working on it now up against the cage. And there he gets it. But there needs an up again momentarily. Knees probably coming up to the hamstrings. These Ahmad fighters are relentless. They're relentless with their attacks. It goes from strikes right into a takedown. The takedown failed. It was a positional battle. Took the back. Now he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna nice. sweep that leg. If he stands up, he's still going to be on his back. Oh, he's going for the rear naked choke. Hook's coming. We got the hooks in. Osmayev already Pressure has one win. Pressure on the win. face. Osmayev has one win via rear naked choke. Can he make it two? The old way of applying that choke was to get the forearm underneath the chin so it was directly in contact with the neck. Fighters now have developed, and oh. they're able to get the submission with that higher up on the jaw you can choke the fighter with a position you see this is the new evolution of the sport of mixed martial arts savage oh, wow. pressure being applied from behind oh, my really cranking it there but there and it's in battling through it getting out of that submission attempt nice work this is still a terrible position though for there needs them to be in But I gotta give him credit. I mean, he's doing pretty good so far. He's gonna end up, he could have ended up on top if he would have just scooted a little bit more right now. 
he ends up with Osmayev on his back once again. It was very, very close, but he never got it. This is very much a game, not of inches, but of less than an inch. If you can get the opponent's pressure less than an inch from where it is, you can escape. But if you can't, you can't. He couldn't, and he is stuck now in back mount with a choke threat. Oh, he got a reversal. But look. Slip that hook. Nice Avoided job. Avoided a threatened arm bar. Oh. Caught the other side. Oh, that looks so tight. Can there anything get out of this? It's tight, tight, tight. Double grip now. Full, full hips looking for that. How about the heart and toughness of Yuri Verenitsen? Gets out of it again. And now throwing ground and pound. Look at this turn of events. Heavy shots coming down from Verenitsen. And I wonder if perhaps Usmayev might have burned himself out a little bit in some of those submission attempts. He was really cranking that armbar. And now we've got Verenitsen on top. You can burn out not just physically, but psychologically. If you think you've got your opponent finished, and he doesn't, it, it lends him a certain strength. It may take him a little while to regain his mental footing, get back into this game, and it may have happened right there. He did a little kickoff into a single leg. Single leg is denied, neck was threatened. Back to pulling guard from Kunkar Pasha Osmayev. What a fight. I mean, just when you think you know in which direction it is going, it turns around. Oh, and he, oh, no, okay. it looked like Verenitsen had, uh, had uh, stepped into mount, but he actually ended up in half guard instead. But still, I mean, he's doing some damage here from the top. I mean, nothing fight ending, obviously, but this is definitely tiring Osmayev out. It's definitely winning him points, and I do think that the turnaround he made actually will win him the round as well. Brave Nation, you did see a push-off attempt, that kick. It was not a kick, it was a push-off attempt. That kick would not be legal to the head because the opponent on top, Yuri Veronitsyn, was grounded. He had both knees on the ground. In that case, you cannot kick the opponent in the face. You can, however, try and push him off, which is what we're seeing here. Still, though, Veronitsyn remaining on top. Doing a good job at keeping Osmayev right where he wants him. Oh, he missed! Just barely missed with that haymaker of a shot. And I think he will regret that because now Osmayev turns, turns it around again. What a back top and forth to bottom, battle. Bottom to top. What a round for these Warriors. What a fight. I mean, it has action in spades. I mean, I don't know, Carrick, how do you score that second round? I was hoping I was going to get a chance to ask you first. <laughs> I'm going to do something that I never, ever, ever say because it's quitting. I'm calling that one even. <laughs> All right, there you have it. And let's see if we can get some of the replays here, courtesy of Green Hill, because there it was just so much back and forth action here in this super lightweight bout. There we had Osmayev, very, very nice takedown from the back. And then he slapped on the rear naked choke. And it looked tight. It looked really tight even. But Veronitsyn remained calm, battled it out or battled through it, and then ended up turning things around. That was the arm bar that also looked to be fight ending. But Yuri Veronitsyn is something else. And there we have the top control from Yuri Verenitsen landing some ground and pound. Sebastian, it could well be that the winner of this round is the winner of this fight. I think it might be, Carrick. I think it might be. I don't think anybody can say definitively either fighter is ahead by two. These two are going to fight like they need to win this round because they very well may. Absolutely. Oh, nice strikes there from Verenitsen. He seems to be a little bit more comfortable in the stand-up than Osmayev. And nice sprawl there, defending the takedown. Osmayev has got to be careful about getting sloppy. Sometimes in the third round, you can see that from certain fighters that they're so eager to get the win that they lose some of their technique. 
Brave Nation, the fighters are right above us now, up against the cage. Some fans of this sport find this slow. If you understand what's going on, it's not slow. It is exciting. This is a central part of this sport, and you got to watch because things like that can happen at any moment. And when things like that happen, it can be fight ending. Absolutely. I mean, we saw a couple times in the last round how dangerous Usmaev could be from the top, going for submission attempts left and right. Very innocent now back to his feet. Has managed to get a somewhat more advantageous position, but he has got to get his back off of the cage here because all this time Spencer got up against the cage is time and points added to Osmaev's favor. I am impressed that Yuri Varenitsyn cannot be taken down and held down. However, that doesn't win fights. He's got, as you said, to circle off that wall. He's got to pummel his arms in, get some hand control, and then try and circle off the wall. Although he's not getting crushed here, he is not winning this fight. Absolutely. I mean, oh, nice, nice elbows, elbows to the head. That, oh, -ho! so. What a slam from, from Kunkar Pasha Osmayev. Wow. Air Chechnya in opera. To change the outcome of a fight, we did see Osmayev get the second takedown. If, had, if it had been completely egregious, the referee could have taken a point away. But as a referee, you never want to do that. You never want to take a fight away from somebody if they had won that round by fighting. I think the referee didn't do it. He shouted a loud warning. I would call that excellent officiating. Absolutely. And having said that, better not do it again. <laughs> exactly. And let's see if Darren Easton can get back some of that second. Oh, look, he's going for an arm bar. I, he's probably most likely not going to get it from that position. But it was definitely enough to, to disrupt the, the top game of Usmaev. Hard to get from that position, but you can injure the arm there. Although the elbow's not completely clear, you can pop a couple of tendons from there. We are right back where we began. There Nitsen was a little bit slow in that scramble. I mean, he has been spending a lot of his time defending takedowns, which is exhausting especially against a strong grappler like Osmaev. But Darrington cannot spend the rest of the round on his back. He's got to make something happen, either a, a fantastic submission attempt or just straight up get back to the feet because he was having a lot of success in the stand-up. Oh, oh, Dernitsen was close to once again spinning out of it. He's gonna look like he was going for a triangle as well. Oh, oh. triangle went for and it was denied. I mean, credit to Dernitsen, he's a gamer, you know, he's he's never completely out of fight. And look, Osmayev trying to wrap up an arm Potential triangle. Potential arm triangle setup. If Osmayev Gets the head tight enough. He'll put that knee on, knee on the belly, slide it across, follow it with his other oh. foot, and he was denied. Oh, big shot to the head off a roll. This fight is looking a little bit like a video game. Absolutely. I mean, it has everything. So much back and forth action. But I think there, Nitsen is starting to feel fatigued. He's a little bit slower in these exchanges, a little bit slower in the scrambles. I mean, he could have probably got enough if he had a little bit more energy in the exchange we saw previously. Such short time now, Brave Nation. We're down to under 20 seconds. Either fighter could make a case for winning this round in the next 10 seconds. And it looks like- There's that crank we saw earlier. Round ends! There we have it. And I think that was Osmayev's way of putting a stamp on that fight, the first fight that has gone all three rounds. Hard to believe, but it is the case. The second round to Tverenitsyn, but I think based on the strength of the first and third round, you've got to give the overall fight to Osmayev. Absolutely phenomenal, grueling, tough fight by two tough 
fighters. I'm honored to be entering the cage momentarily to interview the winner. All right, Brave Nation, for the first time tonight, we go to the judges' scorecards. Your first judge scores the bite 30-27. Your second judge scores the bite 30-27. And your third judge scores the bite 29-28. All in favor of your winner by a unanimous decision. Fighting out of the red corner, Kunkar Pasha.
All right, this super lightweight bout ready to commence. And once again, I have a hard time seeing this going to the judges' scorecards. No fights have so far. 